Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours. Today I'll be explaining how to best optimize your VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in order to get the best possible performance using a great piece of free software called CapFrameX, which I mentioned in my VR settings video. I've included the link to the download in the video description so you can access it easily and quickly. The great thing about this tutorial is that it can be applied to any VR headset and any PC. This tutorial will teach you how to benchmark your own system, which in turn will allow you to really dial in your best settings. My objective is to provide you with clear and concise instructions to monitor your PC's performance and improve your overall VR experience. Although the focus is on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, this can be applied to any app or game using VR or flat screen. It's a great app to learn because you can use it on any games or apps, and it just helps you dial in things faster and easier. Don't get me wrong, I don't spend all day every day checking these things and looking at my settings, even though I make a lot of videos about setups. I do love to fly, obviously. So the whole point is, we want a tool that gets us results quickly and accurately. And if you do enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to Pine the Sky Tours, because I can show you the best setups, tutorials, tips, guides, and tours for both VR and flat screen modes, so you can capture this amazing planet in all its glory through Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Also, please smash that like button as it helps other simmers navigate my latest videos. And without further ado, let's get started. The great thing about this software is that it includes so many different types of tools, which enables you to measure and calculate exactly what's going on in your system. So it gives you the average FPS, the percentage of stuttering that's happening, the top and low percentiles of the FPS and frame rate. So you can tell the difference between the delay of frames. It also includes frame time graphs and quantile curves, L shapes. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is go through each tool and show you how to apply it to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 using VR or flat screen. And you can use this with any other games, but we'll focus on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Some of the tools are more relevant for what we want. And so I'll show you how they work. And some of the tools I'll just explain what they do, but I won't actually demo everything. And the reason for that is because I don't want to get into too much depth in one video. I realize your time is valuable, so I don't want to take up your time explaining in-depth tools that you don't really need to use. However, I will focus on the things that you do need, so this video can just be your reference point to actually dialing in your system. Obviously, I'll be sharing my demos with you, so if you prefer just to follow my settings for my videos, that's cool too. But I thought you might appreciate having this guide because it'll actually teach you how to do it and really, hopefully, get you guys flying in the best way possible on VR and flat screen so hopefully this guy will help you do that and the first tool we're going to be looking at is capture and this is how you actually capture the game footage to be measured so here you can see the user interface the top menus are all different tools which do different things and we'll be starting off with the capture tool so the first thing you want to do is click on capture make sure you select flight simulator in the running processes menu and if you see any other software on the list you can just click on the ignore menu and that'll move that program into the ignored list so it won't be tested. To capture the gameplay you want to analyze, just press F11 to start capturing. You can program this for as many seconds as you like in the menu here, or you can just do it manually and press F11 to finish the capture. Once it's captured the footage, it appears on the left-hand menu here, and you can click on it. And here on the bottom, you can actually rename it and label it any way you want. And you can see here I've got the analysis tab clicked, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The next tab on the menu is the overlay tool. And this is where you can actually set up what your overlay tool is going to include. And you can see all the different options with the different details you can actually change and swap out. So depending on what information you want to see on your system, you can just simply pick and choose here, and then you'll see it in the overlay. You can see my example running here on the side of it. And you can see that I've got some of those options selected for what I want to do when I'm measuring the footage. So this is basically like personal preference. You could just sort of pick and choose what you want to use and what you want to display, which is great because you can just customize it for what you want. So this is a great tool. Next, we have the analysis tool, which is probably the most important tool we're gonna to be using because this is actually how you find out how your system is running and how the game is running. On the top of the screen, you've got line graphs which represent the frame times, the frame rates, and you can switch these between the different line graphs to show you more information. And you've got the L shape there as well, which gives you more information there. And the bottom of the page, you've got the orange bar graph there. You've got the average FPS at the top. You've got the bottom 1% FPS. And you've got the bottom 0.1% FPS. And the way this works is you want to try and get these three numbers as close together as they can. Because that's how you're going to actually limit the frame times and make it less stuttery. So the way I did this is that I capped the FPS in the NVIDIA control panel to 32. I experimented with different numbers, but I found that 32 FPS seems to be the sweet spot for capping it. 
and that led to the average FPS, the bottom 1% and the bottom 0.1% being the closest together, meaning that you get the best performance possible. Capping your frame rate is something that I really recommend you do, and here's how to do it. So you need to go and manage your 3D settings in the NVIDIA control panel, and make sure the program settings are set to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and scroll down to max frame rate, and here you'll see it might be turned off or it might be a different number. So what you do is you just go in there and you set it to 32. Try 32, that's what mine works at, and maybe it'll help you get a starting point. Simply apply it and start the sim. Going back into the Cap Frame X tool, you can see on the right hand side it gives you a pie chart of the amount of stuttering, for example how smooth it is, and the variations of the frame times, as well as the FPS thresholds, and the sensor data. All these tools put together give you a really clear overview of what kind of performance you're getting in the sim. So if you start by capturing some gameplay and go into the analysis tool and you can then take a deep dive into each reading and really try and tweak your system by capping the frame rate at different amounts will then allow you to have a look and see where the differences are and there you should be able to cap your FPS at the correct amount. Also, you might want to go into the sim and start changing settings too, because this is all related to the in-sim settings and the render scale settings for the OpenXR. So all these things are taken into account when I'm testing. So what I like to do is set my sim and set my OpenXR up, then come into Cap Frame X and mess around with capping that for FPS in the NVIDIA control panel and seeing which is performing the best and giving me the least amount of stutter. And this is really the main tool in this software that I'm using to dial in my system, especially with VR. So if you use this software, you should be able to get the best possible performance once you've done some testing. And the next tool on the menu is the comparison tool. And here you can see I'm dragging in different footage to compare it. And you can see it nice and clearly with this bar graph, the differences between the measurements, the FPS, the performance, etc. There are lots of different options here, so you can explore this further. And the next tool is the aggregation tool. And what this does, it compares and aggregates different measurements and different results from different tests. And it's really, really useful because it helps you dial in again and then compare and contrast the different performance you're getting with these different settings. Another comparison tool, and this aggregation is really useful for finding out exactly where that threshold and sweet spot is for measuring your FPS to get the best and smoothest possible performance, especially using VR. Next we have the sensor tool, and here you can set the sensor logging and logging polling period. You can choose sensors to be logged and analyze all logged sensors. Again, this gives you more options and more data to work with when you're testing a system. Next you have the report tool, which can be used to compare multiple records and an overview of all info and metrics. You can also copy the data to a clipboard via a context menu. So again, more results to look at. And the next tool is the sync tool, and here you can see more graphs comparing frame times, percentage for frames within valid monitor sync ranges, and pie charts for drop frames. So again, there's more information here for you to analyze. And the last tool I'm gonna be looking at is the cloud option. And this allows you to upload all your stats and import them onto another PC for collaboration or sharing with others. It includes download records with ID, and you can see all the different records labeled and organized so it's easier to actually make the tests happen. I haven't used this before, but it seems like a really good tool to share results and collaborating with others. So in order to improve your VR, I suggest you have a go at this tutorial and see if you can get the right amount of FPS capped in the NVIDIA control panel and to get the most consistent frame times and frame rates in VR to enable you to get the smoothest and best performance possible at this stage. Hopefully in the future, things will be optimized more and more so you wouldn't have to do so much work for this but I find that this is how I get my best settings. Again, I'm really pleased if you follow my settings videos because I do the hard work for you, but this video is for those people who want to actually try it themselves and dial in their best settings on their system. I've always said it's about striking a balance between clarity and smooth flying in VR, and this is made a lot easier using Cap Frame X. So do check out this other video here where I test the sim in VR using ultra settings. You'll get some quite interesting results. Anyway guys, I hope this tutorial helps you dial in your own settings based on your system, because I've had a lot of people ask me about 2000 series cards, and I know I do have a high spec PC, so the point of this video was to show you guys how to do it on your own system. Please let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions or comments about this software, and I can try and help you out. And I really hope this helps you guys get dialed in. As always guys, please like and subscribe, I look forward to making more videos soon. As always, take care, and stay safe.